I've made quite a few different types of guns in Besiege, but all of these involved using explosives to shoot some sort of projectile forward. In this video, I wanted to try making a reloadable crossbow that shoots bolts using only stored elastic energy. Now, of course, in a real crossbow, that energy is stored in the limbs, and that's why I'm starting here by making some arms from ballasts. Now, ballasts are super bendy if you make long chains of them, so I was hoping by doing this I'd be able to store a lot of energy. Now, I just had to go ahead here, brace it to the starting cube, and after that, I put down a couple of ropes and winches, and I wanted to try pulling this in. Trying this out now, it did seem to bend in a little bit, and I could tell there was a lot of stored energy. I didn't have any way of releasing it at the moment though, so I went back now, and you can see I'm putting in some grabbers. On those, I put down some ballasts, and I put down the ropes on those. That lets me quickly release these, and trying it out now, while it did spring forward, it was lacking a little bit of power. Now this setup also didn't allow me any way to shoot a projectile forward, so you can see I'm changing it up a little bit now, and you can see I'm attaching the ropes to a projectile, and after making a guide rail out of some logs here, you can see I'm using another rope to pull back on the projectile. That'll let me charge it up, and if I release the grabber holding onto it, it should allow me to throw it forward. Now trying this out here, it wasn't bad, but it was getting caught up often, and whenever it did that, it seemed to put a lot of stress on the arms, and that ended up breaking them. Now I thought an easy solution here would be to get rid of those logs I was using, and instead replace them with half pipes. This helped, but it still was jumping over the edge of them, so I had to use one long half pipe instead, and with this, I was able to pull back the arms way more than I ever was before. Now, once I saw this, I wanted to move back my charging arm more, and this can let me get more draw distance before I needed to shoot. And after getting back on that rope there, you can see I moved over the half pipe and made it a lot larger. Now, with this, I wanted to give it a final test now, and you can see I am able to charge it, but it's still just not that impressive, and it ended up breaking when I only got back a little bit further than before. Now at this point, I had realized that ballasts probably weren't the way to go, and instead I wanted to try using hinges. Now hinges of course are able to freely bend, but if you try to bend them in the direction they're not supposed to go, they have a very high resistance to breaking. Now of course, giving this a test, they do bend straight down since there's nothing preventing them from doing that, but trying to pull them back now, I'm storing a lot of energy by bending them in the wrong direction. Now they were taking a surprisingly long time to break here, and I got a lot of draw distance before before I just decided to shoot, and you can see just how fast I ended up going. That's honestly pretty good, and I was thinking with this, I should be able to make a pretty good crossbow. Now for more energy though, what I wanted to try doing is using a longer chain of hinges. This should allow me to get more draw distance, but I'd realized that they stopped bending pretty early on in the chain, and trying to pull them back even further separated them out too far, and the game sort of just glitched them apart. Now I was thinking of what other materials I could use to get some tension, and the next thing I thought about was suspension. Now, suspension is only supposed to expand and contract up and down, so trying to pull it to the side adds a lot of extra tension. The game, though, really didn't seem to like this very much, and it added a lot of strange oscillations and would break apart quite easily. Looking through the parts catalog, though, I didn't really see anything else, so it seemed like I was gonna have to try to make hinges work. Now, again, though, I can't really make it any longer to store more tension, and I can't really pull this back any further either, since I'm completely maxing out the distance that the hinges can go. It did occur to me though, I could get more tension if I stacked more hinges behind the first one. Trying this out now, it wasn't bad, but the problem is that as the hinges in the front start to bend up, they end up being shorter than ones in the back, and they have to bend out of the way, which causes this strange movement. Now, besides just looking bad, I thought this was going to steal a lot of extra energy, so you can see what I did next is actually separating these out a little bit further, and I'm using some rotational joints on the bottom. This means that as I pull it back, they all pull back the exact same distance, which gives me this nice uniform look. And at least with that proof of concept done, you can see now I copied this, I rotated it up 90 degrees, and I moved it over to the other side. Now with this, I pretty much just attached it up to the projectile in the same way I had before, and I wanted to try it out. Now of course, these do still bend straight down, and I was looking for some sort of solution to that, but at least in terms of stored energy, this projectile got shot forward really fast, and it seemed like this was gonna work. Now my first idea to hold these up was to use a couple of steering hinges on top of this design. With this, I was able to hold up the ends, but the hinges in the middle still ended up folding in, and I got this look that really wasn't that great. Now, I did have another idea, and it involved using more hinges. This time, though, instead of having them in the same orientation, I rotated them 90 degrees, and you can see how this one line of hinges really doesn't want to fold down. This was close to working, but it still was bending too much, and this really wasn't going to cut it. I was 
was thinking though, and really I should be able to just use some logs here to keep everything rigid. The logs really don't like to bend all that much, so as long as I keep them on top here, they do a pretty decent job of keeping it straight. Unfortunately though, in the middle, it still ends up sagging down, and while this was semi-operable, it still was bending a lot more than I wanted, and I really wanted something that was completely rigid. That's when I decided that my hinge idea from before might actually work, but instead of using one line of hinges, I'm gonna use three for every single line of hinges I already have. This means that they're really working hard to keep this straight, and after I got that first line in place, you can see I'm copying it back to all of the other lines. Now with this, I finally had something that was completely rigid, and trying to shoot this off here, you can see I'm storing a lot of energy. This log went super far, and honestly with this, I thought that I was pretty much good to go. The bolt though is going to be a little bit heavier than just a single wood piece, so to store more energy, I considered adding on more hinges. This sort of worked, but you can see here, it is starting to bend down on the edges, and just like before, adding on more hinges really didn't seem to add that much more power. Now I returned the arms the way they were before, and after that, I wanted to start working on the bolt. Now, I knew this wasn't going to be super easy, and you can see after I moved in the half pipe there, the next thing I wanted to do was try making the bolt out of some logs and the bomb. Trying this out, though, it sort of just exploded immediately, and no matter what I did, I seemed to have a lot of problems. Now, one thing I had realized is that all of those poles in the middle ended up just shattering as soon as I was trying to launch this, so I decided to replace them with a brace. Now, I also wanted to add on some stability, so for that, I put down some some propeller blades in the back, and with that, I tried linking everything up once again. Now, I shrunk down these propellers, and giving this a test now, it was at least all right, but it seemed to be very uncontrolled, and if I wanted to shoot another shot off with this, I was gonna need to make some improvements. Now, after changing out some of these blocks for ballast, though, I noticed something interesting. Trying to draw back the bolt, at some point, it ended up just firing off on its own, and I was kinda wondering what was going on with that. It seemed like the grabber I was using to pull it back with was a little too weak and ended up just releasing after I got to a certain point. Now to fix that, I wanted to add on two more grabbers to give even more strength. This seemed to do the trick, and after that, I was able to fire it off here, but I noticed the bolt really didn't go all that fast. It seemed like the mechanism I was using to pull it forward ended up just ripping out from under it, and instead of using this long half pipe, I thought that I might get some better contact if I just use a few in the front. Now these are basically just making sure that as soon as I load in, the bolt doesn't just fall straight to the ground, and trying this out now, while it's very unstable, it did shoot forward, and that was a good sign. Now I figured here I should be able to just add on two propellers and try this out. Now once again, it still was pretty unstable here and I did have to bend it up a bit, but you can see once I did that, I was able to fire it into the air and actually get a pretty decent launch. This was a pretty good start, but again, I did want to make this a little more stable so I'd be able to fire a second shot. Now for this, instead of using a half pipe in the middle, what I wanted to try doing is using a couple of very skinny ballasts and also a couple of very skinny half pipes. If I put these more towards the outside, they should act like a couple of guiding rails, and they're going to keep this entire mechanism going straight. The other thing, though, is they're going to be totally out of the way of the bomb in the middle, so they shouldn't explode anything. And after building up four of those, I ended up copying these over to the top as well, and once I saw that, I made sure to copy over some really skinny ballast there. Now, to make it a bit smoother, I also used one really long half pipe instead of the four that I was using before. Now, pulling it back, it actually was super smooth here, and that was a great sign, but trying to fire it off things didn't quite go so well. Now I figured out that more of these guiding pieces should probably help me out here, so I added four more in place to keep this even more straight. This is a pretty big improvement, and while I did leave the barrel, it kind of also still exploded. Now I tried making the barrel a little bit longer to guide it even further out, and once I did that, I tried giving it another test. This time, I could see here that the nose was dipping down, so I was trying to manually pull it up using the drag tool. This was a decent start, and at the very least, I was able to shoot this forward, but it also got very disconnected when I did that, and I was losing a lot of energy. Now, I tried pulling this back again, and you can see here I'm trying to pull it up a little more carefully. This time, it was looking a lot more straight, and overall, things were looking a lot better. Once I fired this off here, it gets see it start to rotate, and it was going super straight. This was almost exactly what I was looking for, and launching off at 170 meters per second, I had a 
really good amount of speed. Of course, though, I did try to launch this a few more times, and I noticed that every single time, it seemed like the nose was dipping really far into the ground. This caused a lot of extra instability, and you can see in this test without any help, the bolt became completely uncontrolled. Sometimes this would even cause it to explode in the barrel, which means that the gun is going to be completely destroyed. Now, to solve that dipping issue, I was thinking of using a propeller right on the front of the bolt. These are going to slightly push it up, and by doing this, it should allow it to stay more straight. I was also hoping these were going to let it fly a little bit further, since it's going to have more propellers pushing up the bolt in the air. Now, once I got these angled right and also shrunk down, I tried testing this out here, and it did seem to be quite a bit better. Without any help, it was already angled up a little bit more, and firing this off, for the first time, it was totally working. Putting this back to 100% speed, though, you can definitely see a small side effect of adding those propellers on. At the very least, though, it was working, and I ended up adding on a sensor to the front of the bolt to automatically release it once it gets to the front. And trying this out here at 100% speed, it did go up into the air a bit, but it did also seem to work, and it released exactly as I wanted. And more tests here, it still seemed to be working, but I really didn't like the way it was dancing around. Now, one very easy solution I found to this was adding on two extra ballasts to the back of the bolt. By doing this, it prevents it from rotating too far down, and this totally solves my problem. This does add a little bit more friction, and I could see that I was firing off a little slower than before, but honestly speaking, this was working really well, and now I was able to shoot a bolt forward and not have it bounce around in the air. Now, with the bolt mostly complete now, though, what I wanted to do next is worry about the reloading part. To start out here, you can see I put down a couple of wood blocks, I pin them in place, and I'm attaching them to the back of the loading mechanism. This can allow me to pull it back up through the rails and get it to latch back up with another bolt. Now, trying this out here, nothing should happen, and it seemed like for the most part, everything was good. For some reason, some stuff was breaking in the arm, but I was able to shoot this off, and you can see here, it still mostly worked. Now, a much bigger problem I'm gonna need to fix, though, is actually in the top part of the loading mechanism. You can see here, as I shoot out the bolt, not only does the bolt leave the rails, but also the loading mechanism. That's a problem, because I really need to stay in the rails if I want to load in another bolt. Now, to start out here, I tried adding in a couple of ballasts, and these were intentionally designed to ram into another set of ballasts. Trying this out here, it still seemed to pull back fine, and once I got up to the top here, you could see the ballasts ram into the pinned ones. Instead of stopping them, though, they totally just sheared off and continued moving forward. That's gonna be a pretty big issue, and I need a way to dampen that load a lot better. One thing I was thinking, though, was adding in some suspension pieces to hopefully do that. Now, once I got these two in place here, I turned up their strength all the way, and I wanted to try giving this a test. This time, it was a lot closer to working, but it still just bottomed out that suspension and broke away. I did like the improvements that I saw, though, and I figured with more suspension pieces, I should be in better shape. I also have some logs on the end here to make it a little bit easier for me to hit, and this time, while it slowed down a lot more, it still ended up just breaking out at the end there, and I was gonna need to do a little bit better than that. Now, I noticed that it broke out. It was slightly asymmetrical, so to hopefully help that, I braced the two sides together, and testing this out, while the middle part was flexing way more than I wanted, it almost seemed to be working, and I thought with some more suspension pieces, I should be able to get all the way there. And you can see here, it ended up just kind of teleporting through the first set of suspension pieces and almost working. That was super bizarre, but giving it another test now, it did actually seem to hit it, and for the first time, I managed to hold onto that top piece. Now, if I fire off a bolt here, you'll notice that not only does the top part end up flying forward, this back piece also ends up going really fast into the back wood. I was gonna need to do a very similar thing to slow it down in the back here, and you can see I'm stacking on some suspension pieces now. And with this, I was able to slow it down, so with both pieces protected now, I just need a way to link them back together. Now, this is where that rope system that I made before comes into play, and you can see once I reattach it up here, after I shoot off my shot, I'm able to slowly winch up this bottom piece and get it to reattach to the top one. And really with that, now I just need another bolt to load up 
into that mechanism. So I copied one out here, and you can see I rotated it up 90 degrees. My plan was to rotate this down into place, and I tried using some pistons and grabbers to get this to work. Rotating this, though, was a lot harder than I expected, and it was also pretty flimsy, so I thought that directly just pushing it down into the loading spot would be an easier way to go. And after getting these grabbers in place here, you can see I am actually able to drop off the bolt that was originally loaded, push down the new one, load it up, and then retract the loading mechanism again. Now, this shot did destroy that suspension that I put in the front, but at the very least, it shot off this bolt here, so that was at least looking pretty good. Now, at this point as well, you can see I put on some logs here, and I'm putting down some timers. Originally, I wanted to completely automate the reloading process and have it pull back the second bolt on its own. This was a good idea in theory, but the issue with it is that there's just so much going on that it's really hard to get the sensors all in the exact right spots to figure out when I need to pull things in place. My other issue is that it was interfering a lot with my reloading mechanism, which I wanted to expand to have more bolts. You can see to do that here, I'm putting down some wheels and I'm adding on some more arms. This is going to let me rotate it 90 degrees and push in a fresh bolt. And you can see now, once I get these all on the arms here, it was at least holding together, but the issue I was having is that for whatever reason, adding on this extra wheel here was causing the arms to kind of break on me and the bolt would just randomly deviate left or right. And I think this is a problem relating to the procedure and a lot of lag, so I decided to go back to my simpler reloading mechanism and instead try it out on some aesthetic things. Now this thing was getting pretty sensitive, so I wanted to keep this down as much as possible and really reduce as much load as I could. Starting out though, I added on some wood to the end here, and this is to make the arms look a little bit bigger. This was close to working, but as soon as I tried pulling it back, the arms seemed to just disintegrate. Making them a lot shorter like this did help, but you'll notice that the angle of the arm is now completely wrong. That was because I accidentally linked the two ends of the arms together, and by doing that, it prevents them from rotating at all. But after unlinking those here, I copied this to the other side, and I wanted to try giving this a test. Now, this was actually working here, but I didn't really like how loose these arms were and just how bad they were deflecting away from each other. To make them at least partially connected, I tried using some springs on the edges here, and with this, I was getting results that were a lot better. I also decided to go ahead here and paint up these arms and make them sort of this nice red color. After that, I also wanted to give the rest of the gun a body, but this was a little harder than I thought. One thing is that covering this entire thing without it intersecting any actually important mechanical components is pretty difficult. Now, I tried cutting out a slot in the front here for loading in the bolt, and after that, you can see I'm extending out these body panels around. I was also having quite a bit of trouble trying to design this and making it look the way I wanted. At first tier, it just looked a little weird, and that's when I realized I totally forgot to add a handle, and I was using my stock as a handle accidentally. Once I figured that out, though, the crossbow is looking a lot better than before, and easily enough here, I was able to paint it all up gray, and you can see I got this nice little look to it. I wanted to try shooting it now, but a lot of panels were breaking and I noticed it really didn't seem to be holding together. Now, I thought that the long half pipes in the middle might have been accidentally grabbing onto these panel pieces, so I tried deleting them, and with that, it did seem to be working. Fortunately, I wasn't able to use a single panel across the bottom here, and I thought it still looked pretty good. At the very least, it actually was working. But with all that done now, I wanted to try doing a double shot test. And while it was a little short of the main village here, I did end up hitting some stuff, and that wasn't looking too bad. Now once I got that all the way up here, you can see I latched onto that front piece and I lined this up to get it right in place to load up another bolt. Now I extended that down here, latched onto it, then released it on the front. With this though, I was able to launch it and fortunately pulling it back this much further didn't end up breaking it and it went out the front of the gun. Now this one did go quite a bit further here and I actually managed to hit some houses and do some real damage. Now I also wanted to try out shooting some other stuff here and you can see I'm trying some different angles. At first I tried shooting these balloons, which actually seemed to work pretty well. For a slightly more challenging scenario though, I wanted to try shooting this tower here, and for the first time, I was shooting at a slight decline. Now this crossbow was a lot of work to tune, and it's the sort of thing I worry that in a future update might entirely break on me, but at least for now, it does seem to be doing a pretty good job of shooting. But if you guys have any more gun-like things for me to make, make sure to leave them down in the comments below. Now also make sure to subscribe if you want to see more content like this, and otherwise, Till next time.